Welcome to the third installment of the five ways Christ is present in the Mass. We went through the first two, which was to gather. When we gather together, Christ is present. And um, he speaks to us through his word, through the gospel. Uh, now, the third present presence is through the Eucharistic prayer, we witness Christ. Mm -hmm. So oh. through the Eucharistic prayer and we're witnessing Christ. Can you help us understand that a little bit? The witnessing of Christ. Well, well, we believe that that uh, in the Eucharistic prayer that Jesus actually becomes present. We are to recognize the presence of Jesus Christ, and we're supposed to witness at this point. If the first thing we do is we gather, the second thing we do is, is we listen to God speak to us, then we witness his presence there among us. That's the third thing we are called to do by the Eucharistic prayer. At what moment does Jesus become present during the Eucharistic, Eucharistic prayer? <laughs> I remember that question in the in the seminary. One time, a uh, one of the seminarians asked um, the professor, "Well, when does actually Jesus become present in the Eucharistic prayer?" And he wouldn't answer our question. And so it's 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 never really defined exactly when that occurs. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this much about that: the part where the priest extends his hands over the elements of bread and wine, which is called the epiclesis, which is the mm -hmm. word means sending down of the spirit. When the, the epiclesis occurs, I begin the drama of Christ's presence begins to occur in our midst. Then you have the words of consecration. Then you have uh, other parts of, of the Eucharistic prayer, which are just as important, actually, but that's that's about all I'll venture as far as that's concerned because that is a very difficult question to answer. So a couple questions regarding the Eucharistic prayer. Yeah. Um, what are some of the parts of the prayer? Well, okay, that's okay. Some of the parts of Eucharistic prayer. Now, I want to use Eucharistic prayer three. I think it's the easiest to be able to come up with the parts of that. The first part of that, before the words of consecration, is called the epiclesis. Mm -hmm. This is where we actually send down the Holy Spirit uh, to come down upon the bread and wine to become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Then there's the words of consecration themselves. Now, I think, I would say that the Eucharistic prayer would still be valid. Let's suppose I had a senior moment and I forgot the words of consecration, but I didn't forget the epiclesis. I think it would still be valid. Well, After that. The intent is there. Yeah, the epiclesis, the sending of the Spirit, is an essential, essential part. Every Eucharistic prayer has an epiclesis. Not every Eucharistic prayer has the words of consecration. Uh, there's one in the, another rite in the Catholic Church that does not have the words of consecration, but it all have, they all have the epiclesis. In does it. the consecration occur if it doesn't have the words? Of consecration. Yeah. Yes, it can. Okay. Yes, I would say it would. And then, and then after that, there's this idea uh, of memorial. Or, or uh, uh, remembering. Uh, and, and so the idea, the word remembering uh, in the Eucharistic prayer or in the ancient culture is something completely different. We think remembering something in the past stays in the past, right. remember it. There, there, something in the past is made present. Mm -hmm. So, it was, therefore, O Lord, as we remember, make present the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension to heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Then it goes on to say, look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and we recognize now at this point the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. So, so now we recognize Jesus is there. Now, the answer to your other question, when does that all occur? So at this point, we're recognizing that Jesus is there. Then it goes on to say that by the body and blood of your Son, filled with the Holy Spirit, we become one body, one spirit in Christ. So there's always, a, it's called a second epiclesis. It's asking the Holy Spirit to come down upon us. So that's an important part. In Eucharistic prayer too, they use the word remember twice. Remember, Lord, your church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have died. And uh, so this whole idea of remembering this memorial is really important part. So these are all different parts of the Eucharistic prayer. 
Um, so how old are these prayers and, and how many are there? There are four that we have in the Missal. Well, no, there's actually, we have the two uh, uh, for reconciliation. We have four of them for various needs and occasions. Um, so that's four, five, six, mm -hmm. that's t uh, that's uh, um, ten. In the Missal, there are actually ten Eucharistic okay. prayers. And I use them at different times. There are certain times I'm not allowed to use certain ones. Uh, daily Mass, I can use the ones for various needs and occasions. I'm not allowed to use those for Sunday so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now at the, at the uh, Easter season, I use usually number two and number three. The oldest is number two. The second Eucharistic prayer is the oldest. The newest is number three, the third Eucharistic prayer. And uh, of, the, of the big four, I guess, some of the ones for various needs and occasions, I think they're, they're pretty recent as well. And then there are the two for uh, reconciliation. But you have one that you prefer and you've been using. I don't Number know that three, I prefer. I, I, I use I use three and uh, two and three mostly now. During uh, and the, I think the most beautiful one is actually the fourth one. Oh, the fourth one. But you have to use that preface. These are sort of the rules of the rubrics. You're supposed to use the preface, and I can't use that preface during a season. It's only an ordinary time. Okay. But it's also very long, and so I don't do it on Sunday because I'm afraid. I will lose everybody's <laughs> attention by doing a long Eucharistic prayer. The words are beautiful. The theology is great, but it's kind of long. Mm -hmm. So, Well, in any event, is the most important part of the Mass? I wouldn't. I don't know that I would no? call it the most important. Uh, it's it's certainly not the important. climax? The... Maybe the through him, with him, in him might be the climax. Yes, okay. I, would, I would say that. Okay. Yeah, the doxology at the end right. of the Eucharistic prayer, I guess I would say that. But then again, you know, which is more important for us to witness or to receive, you know? So I, I would put it this way. It's ascending order. Gather, listen, witness, receive. Okay, so that's a little um, hint to what we're going to talk about in the fourth uh, installment of all this. Right, yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. so, so tune in again. Thank you.